we're gonna get going on this ceiling, get it taken care of so we can get moved onto the side walls, wrap this interior up. We really need to keep moving. We're slowing down in the cold, but that's to be expected. It's uh, six degrees this morning. So had to bust out the, uh, the bibs. Yeah, so it's pretty cold. It'll be nice to get this wrapped up so we can kind of move on. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll get our vapor barrier up. We'll run our uh, F and J, same stuff that we use out on the soffit except for it's a little bit bigger so that the steel can go in the top and then the sidewall steel will go in the sides. Now this is the first job I think we've shown. We're gonna do all steel. So the whole wall will be steel, no plywood which will bring a little bit different detail on the windows. I'll take you through that, show you how we do the window trim, door trim, but we gotta get all this steel organized for the ceiling so we can get it up in the lift and get going. It's gonna be a long day, we got a lot of work ahead of us. So as you can see, we've got our piles of ceiling steel kind of spread all around. We've separated them into different piles for different lengths and now what we're going to do is we lay some lumber down some nice clean lumber and we'll actually set all of this steel up here upside down and uh, that way we don't mark it it stays nice and clean doesn't get damaged but we can still step on it and work up here i mean the whole point of the mega deck is to have this nice workable space and the biggest thing is knowing what order all these go in so we always start in the very back corner, which means we end in the front corner. So we have to lay down the last sheet first. So sometimes we gotta do a little bit of thinking. This building's a little unique. Usually we've only got two to three different uh, dimensions, usually three different dimensions. This one, I think we've got five total different dimensions. So we just gotta make sure we organize it right. Uh, this is what I bought the Mega Deck for, is for ceilings. The ceiling, to be most efficient, you need to have all your material up here and able to work from the deck without having to go up and down out of the lift. Because we'll do this whole ceiling with ever get, without ever getting out of here. So we just got through this uh, odd little corner here on the ceiling. And I didn't know exactly how it was going to turn out because we always snap our starting line and then just run the rest through, you know, basically experience. And we've done it enough that we know how it feels. But now that we came to this corner here we didn't really have anything to go off of and instead of snapping a line we just eyeballed it so let's take a look see what it looks like from this end not bad for the first time second time dude third time uh probably about six so when we run this steel we're running at eight foot on center with the trusses and you can see on our joints we do a double screw each side of the rib and um when we get to where we have these laps, you can see if I spread it apart, this is our lap. We always mark our centers and put a screw in there just to keep this from wanting to open up with the weight of the fiberglass. But it's rated for nine foot on center. And so at eight foot on center and an R38, we're plenty good. Um, I don't think I've ever really noticed any sag. I've never heard anything from a customer. So, you know, get that question a lot. How do we span the eight foot? That's how we do it. I sure do love a ceiling. It really brightens the space. It gives it some definition and it's like instant gratification. We started, we started on this this morning. It's lunchtime. We're going to go get a bite to eat. And when we get back, I'm going to start trimming the windows out because we've got to do that before we run our wall steel. But uh, we got a lot of space to cover that has no window so we can start, basically we can start in this back corner. And I always like to go to the back corner. I've shared this before. It's a little trade tip. Go to the back corner and start there. That way all of your laps are going the opposite way from where people are looking and it will look much better. Same with the ceiling. We started the ceiling in the back and worked our way to the front. Over here somewhere, we marked our ceiling. That's where the attic access is gonna go so that the insulators are able to get up there, 
put R38 fiberglass blown in. Another little tip I'll share with you is you do not want to use cellulose. Um, fiberglass is gonna be better than cellulose. With a big, large, free span structure like a post frame, you kinda wanna use fiberglass. It gives you a better R value. It's a little bit more expensive, but the R value per inch is a little bit better. And it doesn't settle as much as a cellulose. So now that we've got the ceiling done, we're gonna move towards the walls. And this is about as easy and fast and as gratifying as it gets, right Greg? Sure thing. Putting walls up with no plywood, no windows. It's like it's taking candy from a baby, it's so easy. Taking candy from Zach. Taking candy from Zach. I get the job of trimming the windows, which is a little bit of a pain when doing metal. I'm not a huge fan of it. I like a nice wood jam extension with a nice wood casing, but we're gonna go ahead and do some metal, so I'll show you how that goes. We've basically got a custom piece of post trim that is going to wrap around this jam. And then because when the metal goes in there, I'm not a huge fan of caulk, if you guys didn't already know that, I then have another piece of custom trim that is used to close this gap up and make it look pretty. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, and then we'll come out and we'll put our J channel for our steel to come in. So this is how we trim our windows when we're doing a steel interior. So I have these custom post trims made up. It's just got a simple inch and a half bend. And then depending on the depth of the jam, this dimension but what's key is this little bend here it's just a little bit of a bend you can see that what's nice is when i slide these in i'm gonna make it nice and tight you can see i'm just gonna work it now that little bend and it's probably hard to see it's probably not the best lighting but that bend is creating pressure here and pushing this up the problem is, once we put our side pieces in, because this has got just the slightest taper, I could either cut these with a slight taper, or when I put them in, we get this little gap here. Now you might not like that, I would agree with you, I don't like to put a bead of caulk here. So what we do next is I add a piece of inch and a half by inch and a half, and it's just a simple little, um, almost like a little mini angle, and it goes around this perimeter, cleans up this gap here, and I don't have to caulk, because I do not like caulk. Was that your pop? Yeah. My bad. I am always on the hunt for another way to do this window trim. Um, so I'm sharing with you how we do it, but I would love to see how somebody else does it. And in hopes of finding an even better, faster, more efficient, and cleaner look. Although I do feel like I've been in a lot of metal buildings, wood framed, whatever, um, and I think this is a pretty, I do feel like it's a pretty above average look, uh, what you're gonna get if they're even going to trim it out at all. But I just feel like, you know, we can do it a little bit better. We can clean up this little line here. There you go. Next, what we're gonna do is I'll put a piece of J-channel around this, just like we do on the outside of our window. And that's what's gonna accept our steel. There's the interior view of the window. Basically, we do this just like our exterior windows where we run our J-channel, do our nice little miters, and at the top, after the sheet's in, we'll tuck that piece of J in. Making progress. Getting dark though, but these lights are a godsend. So we're back here on what should be our last day of this man cave, and we've got the interior almost whipped out. We're doing some finishing details, waiting on some trims to show up this morning that missed the truck the first time and that's so we can finish out our overhead doors. What I'm gonna do first thing is work on this door. I'm gonna get the trims installed here, which are very similar to the way we do the windows. I've just gotta take a couple of the framing screws that are in the hinges out so that I can slide my trims in, and then I'll 
put the screws back in. Now, one of our last steps to kind of finish these windows on the inside of the building is to kind of clean up this gap. And what we've got there is a piece of inch by inch flashing and it's just under bent. It's not a full 90 degrees, or actually you could look at it like being over bent. It's about 95 degrees. And that is so that when we push it into this space, the goal is for it to want to spring and stay nice and tight to both the window and the flashing down low. Here is that piece of trim, and as you can see, it's just over 95, and that is so when we push it into the corner, it wants to flex back out. This is really hard to focus. Here we go, I got the first piece in, and you can kind of see when I push down, and what I'll do is I'll probably put a screw here in the middle, and I'll put one over here on the side. And then what I've got is these pieces that will go on the side, and when I push them in here, and it's a little bit hard to do with one hand, and that's okay if it's tight, that's gonna get covered up. And that's what I'll have. So I know it's not perfect solution. I would love this to all be one piece, all the way from the J channel back. And I know I could custom bend something, but the problem is lumber is not perfect. And what happens is if this dimension is at all off from the window to the face, I gotta have slop somewhere to account for any imperfections. So right now this is kind of the best way I've found. And I think, I think it's a good look. I don't know, what do you guys think? like the way these trims turned out. I'm always leery of doing it as I look for a better way, but uh, I just have not come up with it yet. So this is kind of our go-to steel window trim detail. Tell me what you guys think of it. Um, does it look like what you guys have seen in other buildings? Is it worse, better? Once again, another miter there that I, maybe that's kind of dirty. There's some, uh, shavings and metal fines in there from the drill holes. I never take a miter to the exact point because that's where you're gonna have a crack and you're gonna see it. But another thing that, you know, these trims do is they add a little bit more white when these doors and windows are custom colored for the outside. They come all that color. I can't get them, especially the windows. I might be able to do the doors white. I don't think so because they roll form these doors with the colored steel, so it would have to be hand painted white on the inside, and that white trim does add a little bit of detail and makes it a little bit more white, so I think it's a really good look. I'm happy. Hopefully the customers are happy. That's the most important part. Greg's wrapping up that outside corner, looking pretty tight, Greg. Thanks, man. Tight is a good thing in terms of trim work means it's looking on point, which is again, a good thing. So I guess I could just say, trim's looking good, Greg. Make sure those screw lines line up. I like it. You can see how that detail. You can see how that detail finished up up there. Got a nice little wraparound trim. It's looking good. We got that attic access. I'm gonna go ahead and make that cover and put that on. I'll use a piece of three quarter ply and uh, throw a piece of white coil stock, the same stuff that's up here above our doors. How do you like that? I think that turned out 
really sharp if I can get it to focus or not be so dark. One thing is when we lay out these walls, um, we're laying out to our roof, which, uh, you know, sometimes we think about it, sometimes we don't. We've got a rib right here, since we're not worried about water, we just take our J, we continue it out like we want. So we want it to overhang. If you look over here at this window, we want it to overhang just a little bit. But since the rib is there, we don't want to cut into it. We just notch our J channel out so that it looks like it's doing that. But we don't want to go into the J, it just makes it a little bit harder. Interior is pretty easy. And then we're gonna do the same thing that we do outside and we're gonna put a screw right Make sure everything's good, and then this one is good to screw off. It's time to load up the machines and head to the next one. It was a good one, but it's always good to finish and see the fruits of all your hard work. I think the customer is going to be quite happy. Can't wait to get back when those doors are done, when the concrete's done might be spring before this place is really looking good but we'll bring you back at some point well i hope you guys enjoyed this build as much as i did i know we had some crummy weather we had some circumstances and it definitely challenged us but not too bad i think it turned out really good and i hope you guys learned as much as i did because this had some different details and features that i hadn't done either a whole lot or very often so it's always good to get into some oddities once in a while not always do those square boxes and uh, I think we got another set of happy customers I hope because I'm happy and we did our best and that's the most important thing so we'll come back here we'll clean up but from here on out this is probably the last video I will do here in a while I will talk to this client and see if I can come back when they uh, you know once they have some finishes in place but if you guys like this build series if you like what we're doing over here on the channel please make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and make sure you share this with anybody you know somebody that might be looking or need a building somewhat like this or in the process of going through a build like this maybe they can learn something as well or better yet maybe you can reach out to me if you saw something that you question or that i could do better because in the end I want to get better myself and that is also why I do this. I share so that uh, it forces me to continually grow and get better as a builder. So with that being said, it's off to the next job site and I don't know if I will record the next job as a build series. I might just take out of it some single videos that are going to help somebody with a certain situation and not do the whole build a day by day type video. I might just do some over like overview time lapse of the whole project. Um, obviously this is a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of effort to put these videos together, but as long as you guys are liking them, as long as you are giving me that feedback that's helping everybody, hopefully, then I will continue to do them because I really do enjoy it. I really do enjoy sharing the process of something that I'm very passionate about, and that is custom post frame buildings. If you are looking for a build, that does not mean I, I wanna do it, I probably can't. I can't travel around the country. I gotta stay close to home where my bread and butter is, where my family is, and that is Northern Illinois. So if you're in that Northern Illinois area, feel free to reach out to me. You can find me over at my website, rrbuildings.com. And um, I just gotta say thanks, guys. I appreciate all the love and support, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Look at this, we're back on a Monday morning. We almost wrapped this sucker up. We've got a couple trim details to put on on the interior. We've got a mess to clean up, but we got our gutter guys here. So the gutter guys showed up this morning. Um, Scotty, my buddy, AR Gutter Services, and I'll show you how that detail works. I definitely wanted to get back here and show you guys how this detail looks now that the gutter's done. Um, that's why I overhang this piece here for the side it gives it that look I could probably shave a quarter inch off or so 
I always do this at four inches. Got the five inch gutter. We got the overhang on the steel. So it just kind of caps it off, I think. I don't get that look of the gutter on the side. Maybe you guys aren't fans of it, but I like it. And I love the way this detail turned out. It looks great. A lot of work was spent right here, but I think it was well worth it. These guys do good, clean gutter work. So it just is another little added detail. We got the gutter wrapping around and it's gonna empty out over there so you don't see the downspout. And then up here on the upper section, we'll just have one downspout. And my rule of thumb is always minimal downspouts. I have no problem a customer needing more downspouts later, but on a building this size, uh, usually one downspout is gonna take care of it. You're gonna get that once in a while freak snow or rainfall that's gonna create more water than a gutter can handle. Um, and I got no problem adding another downspout, but I just don't like the look of them. I like a nice clean gutter line, but I don't like having those downspouts come down the building. So we try to reduce them as many as possible. And uh, I, I rely on my gutter guy, Scotty, who's been doing it a long time to tell me how many downspouts we gotta have and uh, we work with it from there. So we got everything kind of going out to the south and the customer is going to eventually pile it all in.